That is a photo from the ending of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. And I like, always like to talk about uh, the Warsaw Ghetto, Upri Ghetto Uprising when I uh, give my tours of the museum because a lot of people wonder, like, they often use the term lambs to the slaughter. They're like, why did the Jews go like lambs to the slaughter? Why did they not fight? Why did they not resist? And if you think about it, like the Jews, even then were a tiny population in Europe. Like they were a tiny percentage of the total population, even in Poland, where I think they represented like the largest population percentage wise, they're only 9% of the population. So there's not much that they could have really done um, to have a full military resistance against the Nazis, but they did uh, rise up in their own ways. Um, the residents of the Warsaw Ghetto found out that they were to be deported um, on the eve of Passover, um, and the, particularly the youth of uh, the people living in the Warsaw Ghetto decided that they would resist uh, being deported violently. So they sort of had their own makeshift wef weapons that they made, and they held, they dug pits so that like women and young children could hide out from the violence. Um, people did die in those pits because they started the German army army started burning the ghetto and all the buildings in it to smoke people out, and so um, a lot of people who were in those pits underneath the ground were killed in that manner. Um, and after about a month and a half, the Germans were successful uh, in defeating the uprising and deported the remaining citizens and residents of the ghetto. But I think it's important to talk about that the fact that it happened, even if it wasn't successful, just because there is this idea that they were like passive um, and they weren't, the Jews were not passive. And there were also uprisings at camps like Treblinka. There was a major uprising near the end of the war. And a lot of the people who, uh, who rose up died. And that resistance was led by young people which I think is also something important to point out because often the youth are leaders of resistance movements and are, not to say that older people are more complacent, but just that the sort of fervor behind resistance in most situations, not just the Holocaust, comes from the youth who are sort of more optimistic or more sort of have this idea that they can change the world um, or at least change something for the situation of the people that they love.